All right, guys. So I'm over here at the rooftop of uh, of where where I'm where I stay. You know what I mean? So middle of downtown. You know, I've been meaning to come up here and do this like on the reg on a regular basis. So like, there's a lot of really cool views here in downtown. Good backdrops to do podcasts. And now I got the microphone. I got the camera set up with my tripod. Very simple and easy. You know what I mean? It's just a, I've come a long way. You know, I, I used to get really stressed out over the podcast and I'll be like constantly reminding myself like I'm a trader first and foremost, like screw this podcast stuff. It's just, it's all just secondary. I'm just here to network and get information from the, from the people that I communicate with online and, you know, through chat rooms and, and that I look up to from other podcasts. And that was, I think that that was uh, the perfect mindset. You know, people, they don't, they don't understand that. They just think like, oh, he's a YouTuber. Oh, he's he trying to get subscribers. Oh, he's trying to get views. You know, oh, this podcast sucks. It only has 50 views, you know, which is ridiculous. Everybody has it all wrong. You don't understand like how many times I got from like other traders. I think that the really good traders understood the whole time, you know, but like a lot of traders like, oh, you have a friendly bear podcast. How many subscribers do you have? How many views do you have? And they'll just make a quick assessment in their head based off that. And in my head, I'm like, man, this person got it all wrong. First of all, like I was up a lot of money when I started the podcast, you know, um, I was already profitable. So people could learn from that. There's not that many profitable traders in general. Most traders fail. So already that was alone, but nobody really knew. But all the people I brought on the podcast were extremely successful. So how are you going to write off a podcast just because uh, subscribers or views? Because like subscribers or views, serious topics don't get views or, or subscribers. You know, real stuff, real information. If you look at other podcasts, there's always a lot of entertainment in there. There's always a lot of like catchy stuff, flashy stuff, Lambos, whatever. And like, I like Lamborghinis, man. I have nothing against Lamborghinis. You know, they're very nice cars, Italian handmade. I can appreciate Lamborghinis and Ferraris, but like for me to get sucked into viewing something else, viewing if I'm looking for knowledge of trading, for me to have to see a Lamborghini in order to understand the information, it makes no sense at all. Anyway, I mentioned that because um, I did the Crit Mac interview for Macro Driver uh, last week. Absolutely successful. What we did, that was ex- perfectly executed. I envisioned, okay, we need someone to come on this Macro Driver podcast that's going to get some views and going to get subscribers because this thing has got to grow. The needle has not been moving. And I already know, like, the serious trading podcast is already Friendly Bear. Friendly Bear is already, has already done every, exceeded expectations. It's helped me improve tremendously, tremendously to trading. I've networked with the best of the best. I've made friends with the best of the best. I couldn't ask for more. I really, you know, as something that just started, like from me going to Walmart in Puerto Rico and picking up a microphone and not knowing what the hell a RSS feed is or how to host this thing or get it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, I had no clue what I was doing. For me to go for, to that, to like exceeding all expectations and then enjoying it. Like once you got it down, podcasts are fun. It's just fun. And then like getting better at speaking, getting better at now I'm doing monologues that I'm enjoying. Um, people, I'm getting really good feedback from people that like what I put out. Especially now I got like the small fee for the paid subscribers, which is like it weeds out the, the bad people. The trolls and whatever, they're all weeded out. I love it, man. It's freaking awesome. Just put a $5 paywall, boom, cured. You know, more trolls. And so, and especially with trading, you got to keep that mental capital clear. That's the one thing the trolls don't understand. You know, it's like you got to keep that mental cap. Like, I'm a real trader. I'm not a YouTuber, podcaster. This has turned into something fun that I do, and I like giving value out. I love giving value out, man, because, you know, I always get back the same or more than what I put out. And like, I'm, I, I put out a lot of value. So like, you know, um, it's just great, man. It's like you, you, what you give, you shall receive or, you know, reciprocating uh, value. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just awesome. And making friends all over, 
all over the world, you know? I couldn't ask for more. But anyways, today I wanted to go over the topic of um, ego, ego and trading. This is a big one. So, like, I, I never understood why, like, some traders, um, they, okay, they find a mentor, they find, like, or they don't know anything. They, they're, not, they're not profitable. Now, let's say they know a little something. Actually, they need to unlearn what they learned. A lot of times, like, like you know, if you're following some, some, uh, some YouTube channel and you're trying to get some strategies off YouTube, off ZipTrader or whatever trader, and you learn some VWAP strategy or you learn some whatever, and, you know, everything else is a disaster in your life. You're just trying to learn some, some, some strategy, some random strategy on YouTube, and then that doesn't work. Or like, let's say, even worse, you follow the full rule. You got sucked in, your mindset was messed up, and you got sucked into the Lamborghini lifestyle of some full rule. Or, or you got into Forex, these Forex full rules. Man, it's like, I have a, a friend actually, I consider him a friend still, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I distance myself, but like, but like, uh, it's like, man, I think that's a full rule, bro. You're following a full rule, this Forex thing. And like, it's been three years, he's still learning Forex, learning Forex off the same full rule. And in my head, I'm like, God damn, bro. First, you didn't listen to me and go to stocks. You saw me go from zero to 100 in three years. Uh, well, you know, I studied way more before that, but it, I've been over PDT since May 2020. So since May 2020 to now, now it's June 2023, my life has changed completely, like absolutely completely. And like if you're a friend in my life and you saw that, the whole process, like in person, what are you doing? Why are you still following this Forex guy? But anyways, he, he got sucked into the Forex, the Lamborghini lifestyle, and really believes that this person is, is real. And in my head, I'm like, that guy's a fool rule, man. He's selling courses. What they do is these Forex people, and I confirmed this with Austin Silver. He's a Forex, he's a real Forex guy. And he broke it down to me on the first podcast that, that I interviewed him. He's a Forex uh, trader and he has courses and stuff. And he said, okay, so what these other four, the furus in Forex, what they do is, they, it's like a multi-level marketing thing. They buy a, a course and then they just redo the course with their style. And their style could be flashy marketing gimmicks. So like, like generally the information is foundational but it's not gonna get you Lambo you know it's just you're in a in a you're chasing a ghost so anyway um, if you did follow a full room and then now you you finally got yourself out of that let's say miraculously you're like man I'm done with this I gave this full room two years and I'm done uh, I really want to change my life I really want to do this like I know I know it can be done and, I, and then you work on yourself, your mindset, and now you don't care about Lambos. Now you, you did your, your research on a, on a real guru or a real mentor, and you're like, all right, I'm signing up to this mentor. And uh, I know I, I interviewed Chris Cady um, a while back, and he said, yeah, once you find a mentor, you just do what they say. Put your ego aside and just do what they say and until, you know, until you get profitable. Just do what they say, you know what I mean? No rebuttals, you know? So that's the thing. So people, even though they find the mentor, they still think they're smart. Like they still think they're unique. They still think they can, you know, like they're the chosen one or something. I don't know what it is, but their ego, they gotta have a rebuttal. They always gotta challenge the mentor. They gotta, it's like, bro, I never understood. Like you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Like that's it. So that's something I see all the time, man all the time so even a trader that like is a really smart high IQ person sometimes the IQ man it gets it's it's too high <laughs> it's like when I talk to my architecture friends let's say in 2021 and um, they think they're geniuses you know with trading and I'm like I'm trying to explain to them what I'm doing and then they got a better solution they think they have a better solution they, they I'm like in my head I'm like why are you arguing against me? I've been doing this 18 hours a day for so many few years now, and I'm making money, 2021, and I'm in Puerto Rico in an office. Like that adds credibility. Like you're in an office trading. This is what you do. And then like this architecture guy, 
friend of mine in Florida or in California has a better solution than me. He thinks he, he presents him like a, a better, he's like, you should try this trading instead. You should try this for taxes instead. And I'm like, bro, I'm in, I'm in uh, Puerto Rico. All the best traders are here for tax incentives. Like, there's no other solution, you know? <laughs> but they, 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 they can't accept that. They got their egos in the way. And of course, fast forward a couple years later, they don't invest anymore. They're not trading anymore. They don't have any opinion anymore. I, I reach out to them, crickets, no answers. So like, what's up with the ego, man? For me, it, it was just, um, it wasn't hard. I was like, all right, I don't know anything. I gotta, I gotta, you know, take a back seat and just like follow whatever the instructor says, you follow it. That's it, until you get profitable, you make some money. In my case, that was the case in 2020 and 21 I was trading the pre-market I made I made a lot of money in the pre-market a couple hundred thousand dollars is a lot for pre-market uh, trading only and I remember asking Tim Bowen on Instagram on uh, Instagram live in the morning he did like pre-market prep I don't know if he does it anymore but then he you know he wasn't one of my mentors I knew my mentor at the time it was Sykes it was Lento especially it was Mark Crook it was Michael Good. It was uh, those guys. Bowen, I never knew what he was really doing. I know he was a, uh, he did uh, part-time trading, this and that, and uh, but I never really understood what he was doing. He was just doing like a safe strategy, I guess. He's made, I think in one of the Tim Sykes video at the time, he made like, you know, under 100K or whatever. So I never really like took as what he said is like Bible, you know what I mean? So anyways, he berated me in, in an Instagram live. I was like, hey, Tim Bowen, what do you think about this pre-market trading that I'm doing? I just made this amount of money, this amount of money for like a few months now. And uh, he just berated me. He's like, I never met a pre-market trader in my life, in my life. Like he got really animated. And I'm like, all right. I didn't have a rebuttal. I still didn't have a rebuttal. I was like, He's, he doesn't know. Like, if I have three months, or no, like, it was like four or five months of trading pre-market, and I think I was up like 70, 80 grand at that time pre-market, life-changing money. I never had that kind of money in my entire life, my entire life. And I'm in my, I was in my early 30s at the time, or almost mid-30s. Now this guy's berating me, so it's like, all right. Like, my ego didn't feel like arguing with him. I'm not going to argue. He just doesn't know. And I already had enough data to go by to know that what I was doing was right. So it's like, this is a big thing with trading. You know, it's like having the ego aside and knowing, having an intuitive common sense feel of when you're right and when you're wrong and when to argue, when to not argue. When is it not even worth arguing? Because arguing is not debating where you're getting somewhere closer to the truth. Arguing with trading is a depletion of mental capital. Your brain is 100%, now it's like 95%, 90%, 85%. You're, you're losing your, 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 like your power levels like in a video game. So it's very sensitive, very sensitive. You know, you, you can't be doing that. So like, like the other day at my gym, I was doing a, um, a monologue. For example, I'm gonna use this as an example. And uh, it never went out, but one guy, uh, he got really angry that I was doing a monologue and I was like, and I, you know, it's like, man, you're always going to get some haters, but you're allowed to do monologues there. I made sure. And I, I pay a lot of money to that gym. So they better allow it. You know what I mean? Or else <laughs> it's like, that's part of like the value that I get from it. And then, um, whatever, there was a whole drama. And then like, uh, I had to go to the supervisor and the super, I told the supervisor what I'm doing and, that, and everything's cool. It worked out in my favor. But then I had shit to do that day. Like, now I walk to the office and like my mental capital from arguing or presenting or, you know, putting, I was put in a defensive position so I had to like uh, come up with like why I was doing that and why it's allowed and all the proof I had because you're debating now against someone that doesn't want to do, doesn't want you to do, the other guy, doesn't want you to do what you want to do. Now you have to present the reasons why you're right and why they're wrong. That's a lot of energy, that's mental capital. And like I had to do like two podcasts that day. I had to do 
trade editing, I had to go over webinars, I had to do some reading. So like if I'm spending 45 minutes arguing about with this guy and like presenting my case to the supervisor because I don't I want to keep doing the monologues there. You know what I mean? Because like I like doing the monologues. It's it's like I'm not going to stop doing what I like to do and what I, makes me happy. You know when I am right, when there's no one around and it's like just like this if someone just pops up and starts arguing with me, hey, you can't do that. That's kind of annoying. There's just some haters. Some people just don't like, they don't like to see others succeed. Especially when you put yourself out there. There's going to be like, so you got to, I like to flick those people off. You know what I mean? It's like the trolls. You just flick them. I don't have, like I said in the last podcast, I don't have a million subscribers where I can just, I, I just ignore them. I have few where I can pinpoint and flick them off. You know? So anyway, after I was done with that and I was, um, everything turned out all right. I'm just, I'm continuing to do what I do over there. And that guy, he got like a, he got in trouble for that actually. So, you know, then when I went to the office, I was exhausted. I was exhausted mentally. You know, I know that I'm like, man, my mental capital is like a 60% now. That was very stressful. And for what, for what, just for, for, it was, you know, some guy just arguing for no reason, just because he's not happy. So like, I'm always aware of the mental capital, you know? That's why um, if I'm mentoring someone and they're arguing with me about like why I should sh- institutional ownership doesn't matter or why nano floats and micro floats are okay to short or why Chinese stocks are okay to short or why it's like, bro, like you already know that I thought about this already. Everybody knows how detail oriented I am. I have so many podcasts by now you guys see the stats i put up you guys see everything you already know what kind of person i am i have an architecture background so detail oriented i'm like ocd but without like ocd is like a negative connotation i'm ocd in a good way you already know i thought about everything for the most part i I, it's all it's already been done i already concluded that chinese stocks we're not doing that you know I'm not trading Chinese stock. One of my three biggest losses of all time have, have been Chinese. That tells me, and the other losses are by far not even close. They're, you're not going to convince me to short Chinese stocks anymore. It's done. And then on top of that, I interviewed all the, the major players of Chinese. Like, it's done. It's already been decided. We're not arguing. Now you want to freaking argue. You know? Shout out to Sam Putnam. He likes to argue the Chinese stocks. Or shout out to whoever it is. You know who you are. It's like, bro, we're not. So now it's depleting my mental capital for my future performance in something else. Mostly stocks. But then other things that I want to get done during the day, you know, it's like there's only so much bandwidth you have. You know, so like that's why it's good to surround yourself with things and people and things you like to do that help maintain your mental capital and make you happier so now now you're it's, it's fun that's why like when podcasts are fun i can do more of them and it doesn't and i and i still trade extremely well and it makes me better with trading or like when i interview and make friends it makes me better with trading it makes me happy to do the podcast and give value out to people and and help change their lives and inspire this is good this doesn't deplete mental capital this helps now, if, um, if you catch yourself, you know, uh, getting stressed out, I mean, anything that you start at first, like, for example, the podcast that I'm doing uh, when I started in 2021, that was stressful. Me figuring out the audio, the visual, the RSS feed, the this, asking people to come on. They don't know who I am. I was a, I was a hidden trader back then. No one knew who I was. That's stressful. And that is going to deplete mental capital. But you got to be strong and see yourself in the future like I can do this this is a vision I have for myself and I got to get this done because I can see the benefits this is good this is good so that's what I did with the podcast so there's like positive things that deplete mental capital as well you know if you're creating something if you're on your journey like for trading you're trying to figure something out that's going to help you in life that's going to you're learning something that's yet you want to save your mental capital for that so, yeah, so going back to the ego, yeah, you got you to gotta put your ego aside, man. I remember um, 
when I was at the Tim Sykes conference last year in October, uh, Ellis, Art of War, was uh, one of the speakers. And Tim, and he, you know, he played at the NFL, uh, the Patriots. And um, Tim Sykes asked him on stage, what, what happened to Plaxico Burress? How come he doesn't want to trade? Because I think Tim Sykes made a video or like a one day lesson with Plaxico Burress and some athletes. But like, I was wondering, because like, I never saw them again on those videos. They were supposed to do a, a lot of videos, so they wanted to learn. And I think they dressed up, these athletes, for the, for the Sykes video, they dressed up with like a suit and they looked well with glasses, like, you know, looking like, like they're students. And, there were, and nothing, you know, nothing developed from that. So I always wondered that like vaguely, you know, you forget about it. And then, but anyways, Sykes brought it up. He, Sykes must have done that like in years ago, maybe 2015 or something like that. But uh, these, these athletes, they wanted to learn trading, but they didn't want to put in the dedication and the work towards it. And um, so when Sykes asked Ellis that, Ellis said, yo, it's, it's the ego. They have, their ego is too big, you know? So like, and, and you know, think about it. You have this uh, Plaxico Barres who's like all-star wide receiver. I think he caught like a, a championship touchdown or something. And his ego was just like through the roof. So like for him, and Plaxico is probably thinking, I make this amount of money. This guy doesn't make as much money as me because I'm a football player. And like he didn't want to like put his ego aside to open his mind to learn. And that's just one example. But like you see this happen with so many traders. They just can't put their ego aside. They think they're too smart. And I'm going to call out the, the systematic traders and the data traders. You know, it's like this is what I see tremendously with the systematic and the data driven traders. They have all this. They're very smart people. A lot of them, not, not all of them. Right. But like a lot of them that make it. They're very smart. They gather all this data and they calculate all the data. They they're good with math, with science. They're just they're just really high IQ people. And then, like, when they, when, let's say they're looking into a mentor and the mentor is, is just uh, presents their, what works for them, they think they, that's not enough. It's not as sophisticated enough for them. And this is their ego. It's like, first, they haven't accomplished that much. And now they're trying to, like, come up with a better solution. You know how many times I've seen that? Like, I'll go meet some traders in person and they're unprofitable and like they're presenting their trading to me and, and what am i supposed to do am i supposed to like be like yeah that's that's good that's good keep doing that you know awesome i need to try that the fuck of course not you know it's like they're not profitable so yeah it sounds good you know the other day i put up the think or swim scripts actually yesterday i put on my twitter and said hey who wants think or swim scripts because like I, I was uh reorganizing thinkorswim i only use two scripts ssr and uh previous close i'm pretty sure some people thought i was doing some crazy scripts and some people you know um that's all i use man but i'm sure like some some traders are like oh man you know i like, guess not enough they think they have a better solution like bro this is what i use and i like it that way you know so you simplify things but um you know some people their, their ego they just can't accept it and like, if you don't put that ego aside, if you have an ego, if, if that's getting in the way and you don't want to admit it, you got some serious mental work to do, man. You got some serious mental work to do. Um, that's one thing I pride myself with. Like I am really mentally strong. It's, um, it's what I've been through in my life. You know what I mean? I was reading Tim Grover's, uh, I was listening to Tim Grover's review that I made um, a year ago at TradeSpace. And it's like, you know, a lot of the greats, they've already seen some dark stuff. And, like, it's already been done. You, you can't do any more than, to them than that. And for me, man, it's like, all the, you know, we all have those things throughout our life. But for me, it's pretty extreme, man. I had, like, the brain operation. I had a, I was a, a, going to shower in Skid Row. It's just some of the things. The student loans. You know, there's some of the things. There's stuff like in childhood and stuff I'm not going to ever talk about. Uh, publicly but like you know everybody has those kind of issues and tra trauma that they can reach into and it propels them that you know use that for energy you know 
um, Grover, Tim Grover talks about in the book Winning, Tom Brady. Tom Brady was picked, you know, he, he's, I think he just retired, but like he was like 43, 44 years old, still playing at the highest level in the NFL, won the most championships, but he was picked dead last, I think, in the draft. And if you look at his photo, his body, like, it looks like, uh, it does not look like an NFL quarterback body that's going to win all those championships. So, of course, that had something to do with his drive. Like, he was able to reach into that. It's just naturally, it's just what he's been through, to reach into that, that pain from, all, from everybody looking over him for so long. And he just able to flip it on everybody, you know? So, yeah, man, that's another thing. Yeah, go, go read Winning and read Relentless. I like audiobooks. I think the, the audiobooks are the most efficient way to get a lot of information down. Um, 1.75 speed. But yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it's that constant uh, drive that you got to have to self-improve. And that ego's got to go away. As you see, man, like, I talk to everybody. I talk to six-figure traders. I talk to seven-figure traders. I talk to eight-figure traders. I'm always on a search for knowledge. And I know the six-figure trader has, has some knowledge that I, I need to look into. There's a lot of eight-figure traders and seven-figure traders that haven't made money the past couple years. So why is a six-figure trader that's killing it percentage-wise and gains and, you know, and, and just trading being overlooked? I always wondered that. Why, why doesn't everybody get on the same page with that? You know? Um, yeah, so I'll talk to anybody. I'll talk to a yoga instructor. I'll talk to a, a mental performance coach. I'll talk to a psychologist. I'll talk to Crip Mac. Crip Mac, his views on the homeless over here. You know, I want to talk to everybody. You know what I mean? So, and that, what does that tell you? My ego's in check. I'm not better than anybody. You know what I mean? So, like, that's a good thing for trading. Ego in check is a really good thing for trading. If you're judgmental on someone, if you're, you think you're better than someone else, if you're, you know, if, if, if someone, if you're following a mentor and you want to propose so, uh, that they trade better and you're not profitable, that's a problem, you know? So um, one thing I say, I used to say a lot is, um, one thing I hate is an unprofitable trader with opinions, you know? And that's what you see on Twitter. That's why the, the blocking has to be, now, now I understand why all these traders, these bigger traders, they block people on Twitter. It's like unprofitable traders with opinions and trolls this does not serve you for trading. In fact, I think everybody should be on, uh, start blocking negative people on Twitter, man. You're going to improve your trading because, like, you don't want to get sucked into the negativity. Um, I'm going to start to wrap it up right now, but I remember yesterday, Audrey, the co-host of Mac Macro Driver, you know, she did a little interview with Crip Mac. And, you know, of course, she's a girl and, like, this Crip Mac is a gangster. And um, they did a, she did a little seven-minute interview with him. And then, you know, you got some haters in the comments, but no, like 90% is positive. And then there's going to be some haters, some trolls and some haters trying to steer things up. And she, she messaged me and she said, oh, she's, she's a lot younger than me. So she knows about like the culture of, of the social media. And she said, you know, let's, let's delete those comments because it's going to, these people are going to get into more negative comments and there's going to be a whole train to them. So it's like, people are like sheep. It really is like sheep. Once you have one negative comment, because if you see a lot of positive comments, you're, you're scared to be the only negative one. But if you see one negative guy, he, he broke the ice, then it just piles on. So people are really like sheep. It's just like, like with trading, like a pump and dump, like Zach Morris. You know, he says to buy the stock and he has a following. They just buy blindly. You know, it's all human, human behavior. And that's what I love about the markets. It's all human behavior more than anything. And what does that mean? That means you got to be in control of your human behavior as much as possible. And that starts with, that includes getting, keeping your ego in check. And uh, with that, I'll leave it. That's a 30 minutes on the timer. I got some shit to do today. Bear Talk is going private. Bear Talk Audio is going, going to go private. When I say private, that means it's going to go for private, for paid subscribers, you know? So like this pay subscription is so small it's, and it's like so much value, you know? It's just like, it just is to weed people out, you know? And 
and also keep in mind I've been paying the all the stuff for the for the friendly bear for two and a half years now out of pocket so like yeah man it's just like for those that hate on it like oh you know it's like bro like they don't know what they're talking about they don't know what they're talking about like what I'm supposed to do like I'm supposed to give stuff for free to people that don't appreciate like no man I'm devaluing myself man so like I'm constantly in a lookout for how to how to evolve as a person because like you don't just stay the same I am not the same guy as I saw in that video from Tim Grover's uh, review uh, the book yesterday I'm like god damn I've changed a lot that's just a year and a half ago anyways the, the cops are flying around downtown LA man so yeah that, that is that is my office right there 28th floor um, Deloitte is this building they do auditing for stocks <laughs> um, and yeah I'm in uh, the train station above the old train station 1925 train station over there is in the beautiful Art Deco building yeah I love it here man I love it you know you, you stick with trading you do things right uh, you're gonna go a long way and finally over there you guys can't see it is the Double Tree Hotel where Friendly Bear Conference and this new thing uh, that's happening is gonna be September 16th in LA and there's gonna be a tour of uh, the Friendly Bear Studios, Macro Jabber Studios, Davis Trading Office, Sick Trading Office in there. We're gonna go on the 54th floor, 71st floor. Um, it's gonna be sick. And this is being well planned. This is not just like a winging kind of thing. So September 16th is gonna go down, this huge thing. So anyways, I can't wait to see people here for that. And um, yeah, let's, let's work on that ego, guys. Get that ego in check. I'll see you guys later.